So, per my video last week, I am approaching a year on testosterone, and I'm going to be making a set of videos that deal with sort of um, specific issues relating to transition that, um, that came up for me when I was considering hormonal transition, and um, sort of how I was thinking about them pre-T, how I'm thinking about them now, and what has changed for me since being on testosterone. Now, I had kind of hoped to start off the series with something very profound and of general relevance and where I didn't have to say gross things like facial hair and bodily hair and leg hair and arm hair 15 times in a minute. But you know what? That's what the video is about. This one is about hair, and I kind of forced my own hand because I buzzed my head earlier this week, so it is more or less the perfect moment to show off my hairline and talk a little bit about that. Um, Pre-testosterone, hair is really not something that I wanted to change. I like having a lot of head hair, I'd like to continue having a lot of head hair, and when it came to bodily hair and fa like, I really don't care about being able to grow a beard, um, I really didn't want any more bodily hair than what I already had, and um, you know, the only thing that I thought a little bit about is just that the skin of cis men looked so different from mine, um, partly in terms of the texture of the skin itself, but really also because most adult cis men have a certain amount of stubble or five o'clock shadow, you know, even if they don't have facial hair, you can tell that they could have at least some facial hair. Um, so I thought about that a little bit, but it really wasn't a high priority thing for me, um, and I didn't want more bodily hair at all. Um, in fact, I was a little paranoid about it, because, to be honest, I'm most drawn to men who are kind of androgynous, and that is something that's changed for me a little bit on testosterone. My taste in men has broadened somewhat, which I suppose is a story for another video, but, um, but I tend to like guys who are, um, both femme in their presentation and who have more feminine bodies, um, particularly in terms of um, build and bodily hair. Like I, like, I like guys who are a little skinnier, and I like guys who aren't very furry. Um, it's just my deal. Now, like I say, some of that has changed for me, and definitely it's changed in terms of the way I regard myself. Um, I started noticing a difference about bodily hair within a month or two for sure, in terms of really a noticeable difference, something that I think was perceptible to somebody whose nose wasn't an inch away from my arm, probably it was about four months um, before I really started noticing much, and it's been a very gradual change for me up until about the last two months, and about the last two months it seems like every time I look there's more hair someplace, um, and sometimes more hair every place, and for the first few months before much had really changed, um, I really kind of worried about it. Um, I didn't think it was something that I was going to find appealing in myself, and I was thinking, you know, God, I'm going to have gone on testosterone and be trying to change as much about my body as I was before I was on testosterone. Um, that's really not how it's panned out. I, one reason for that is, um, you know, I, I look at myself in the mirror, and there are places where I expect to see hair and places where I don't expect to see hair, and the fact of the matter is, since my whole body has gotten hairier, um, there's still a pretty similar level of difference, right? Like, like most people, um, my forearms and lower legs are hairier than my upper arms and my thighs. Um, my, the midline of my chest and belly are hairier than anything out to the periphery. So, while the amount of hair has changed, the sort of proportioning of it has not changed that much. Um, although, in some areas it has, because I really was... My upper arms were pretty much totally hairless. I had some fine blonde leg hair on my thighs, but that was about it. Um, and really nothing but peach fuzz on my face. I mean, I still had to do something about it, I couldn't just let it grow, but, um, but not, you know, not adult male facial hair. Um, so there are some areas where there's hair where there was none before, so that's changed a little bit, but the sort of overall placement of it hasn't changed 
completely. Um, the other thing that has changed is my appreciation for or acceptance of it. Um, because, to be honest, it turns out that how much hair you have on your arms makes a pretty significant difference in how you read as male. Um, how much hair you have on your legs makes a pretty significant difference in how, well, I shouldn't say how you read as male, how I read as male. Um, because as that has changed, my read has altered perceptibly, and, um, you know, certainly it's not that by itself, but looking in the mirror when I'm wearing short sleeves when I'm wearing a pair of shorts, I, I look a lot more believably male than I did um, previously. And I just remember, like, last summer, I really did sweat endlessly about do I go out in the 100 degree weather in a pair of pants because my legs look like a woman's legs? Um, or do I wear shorts and be comfortable but be, you know, really uncomfortable? So um, that has gone away, and being able to have that level of comfort with how people view me has more than compensated for whatever I thought I was going to lose if I got a little bit furrier. And to be honest, it doesn't bother me. Um, I do some selective manscaping, but I, I really, for the most part, it's cool. I'm not that worried about it. Now, my head hair, I do still worry about. Um, as my girlfriend and other close friends could probably attest, I, I kind of whine about it endlessly and look for endless amounts of assurance, and it's really a little bit obnoxious. But I've gotten better for the last last little while because it doesn't seem to have been changing much. Um, my hairline is definitely altered, but it seems to have really just receded to a more male pattern and to be pretty well staying there, at least for now. Um, and my hope is that it'll, you know, continue to stay there for as long as possible. Judging by my dad, probably by the time I'm in my mid-thirties, I will have um, a significant amount of male pattern baldness, but um, but nothing catastrophic. And you know, if I can if I can just be a pretty boy for like five or six years, I promise I won't throw a fit when I go bald. But I want the five or six years, right? So hair for me has been a matter of surprisingly little tension. Um, the only area where I wish things were a little bit different, much to my own surprise, is in terms of facial hair. And this is really less about actually wanting facial hair, um, because I've got already enough of a, of a male look in terms of, like, you can tell that there would be facial hair there if I let it grow. Um, then it is about the fact that Every time I start growing a new area of facial hair, my skin breaks out like mad, and it drives me up a freaking tree. Like, shaving is such a pain in the ass, um, and would be less a pain in the ass if my facial hair would just all hurry up and grow in so I could quit, you know, having it be an issue. So, that is where I'm at with hair. So I was watching this before I posted it, and I wanted to make a quick addition of actual useful information as opposed to just, you know, the usual navel-gazing. Um, if you are about to start transition, if you've just started transition, um, or whatever, if you're mid-transition and you're just having issues shaving, um, I cannot recommend strongly enough that you get an electric shaver and at least try it out for a month and um, see how it works with your face. Like, I know a lot of people th seem to have trouble getting a clean enough shave with one, um, but I really did find that it took like two, three weeks before I did. Um, but it is so much better than a razor in terms of tearing your skin up, uh, especially if you're like me and your skin tends to break out a little bit when you start growing facial hair. So um, I, I would really recommend it pretty strongly. You can get one for 30 or 40 bucks, um, you know, just budget the money, it's totally worth it.